Hello, my name is Michael Rooks. Arrow clocking is the rotation of an arrow that occurs independent of fletching effects. Even bare shafts will display arrow rotation when shot. This rotation can be clockwise or anti-clockwise. It is generally, but not universally, anti-clockwise in a right-handed archer. There are concerns in speed loss when the fletching is set to rotate opposite the natural spin typically right offset or right helical with an inherent anti-clockwise rotation. There's also concerns of loosening of arrow points with a left offset or left helical fletching. The standard explanation for arrow clocking is the rotation in the bow string and are the serving. No mechanism for this causation is offered as far as I can determine. Evidence appears anecdotal at best. I am dubious that this is more than independent observations. Furthermore, there is more logical explanation, albeit less simple. Not so simply stated, I believe arrow clogging is due to Coriolis forces placed on an oscillator, the arrow, by combined gravitational and bow port forces. We will start with the oscillator, the arrow. Compressive forces from the string will result in forward acceleration and bending of the arrow shaft. The bending produces vibrations or oscillations in the arrow. With a finger release, the vibrations are primarily horizontal and with mechanical releases, primarily vertical. It is rarely purely one direction or the other. The vibrations produce an inertia, a resistance to change in position that aligns with the plane of vibration. This is somewhat similar to the angular momentum of a gyroscope. Indeed, the gyroscopic sensors in your phone use an oscillator. When you shoot an arrow, it is initially pointed upwards relative to the target. It rotates downward towards the target secondary to the force of gravity, the forward center mass in the arrow, and the air resistance of the fletching. This produces a downward rotating torque on the arrow in the vertical plane. The arrow's interactions with the string, as well as the initial lateral displacement and reactive forces of the plunger produce torque forces in the horizontal plane. These are seen as fish tailing as the arrow leaves the bow. These may be more to the right or more to the left based upon the dynamic spine of the arrow. In our example, this is more to the right. The Coriolis force is what causes the lateral movement of an object moving in a straight line when acted upon by a rotational force. If you roll a ball on a spinning disc, it will move in a curved path along the disc secondary to the ball's inertia. This is the Coriolis effect. If you try to rotate a vibrating object, the object has linear inertia. The object will try to return to its initial position secondary to this inertia. This force acting on a rotating vibrating object is its Coriolis force. This force is perpendicular to the linear initial motion. The rotation in the horizontal plane of the arrow changes the direction of its oscillation. Gravitational forces want to rotate the arrow point down in the vertical plane. This force is stronger on the left side of the arrow, front of center, and stronger on the right side of the arrow, back of center. The resultant Coriolis forces produces a clockwise rotation. If the arrow rotation was to the left, the Coriolis forces would be reversed and rotation would be anti-clockwise. Now I realize this explanation is much less palatable than the string twist theory, but it does have a more sound basis in standard physics. If you made it this point, I congratulate you on your pain tolerance and thank you for your attention.